Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. Culture in Las Vegas. You know, for most people, culture has always been here, but in reality, it has not. For a long time, the culture were places like the Lido Show, Folies Berger, and all of those shows up and down the Las Vegas Strip. It's only been in recent years that culture has truly come to Las Vegas. Now it's here in full force. In a moment, you'll meet the man who has helped bring culture to Las Vegas. His name, Myron Martin. You'll get a chance to meet him in just a moment. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions, <coughs> or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Hey, it's Mark Chinook from Monday's Dark, and you are watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Over the years, Las Vegas has grown in amazing ways. Not only the great hotels, not only the great restaurants, not only the great communities, but all of those things that make Las Vegas the great city that it is today. One of those things, as I had mentioned before, is about culture. And true culture does not happen easily. Sometimes you have to be dedicated. It's ironic that today we were in this wonderful dining room here in Liberace's mansion, talking about culture, because this was the one place that a lot of the culture that Lee had was brought about. His amazing talent as a chef and the great things that are in this wonderful dining room. But culture, coming to Las Vegas, happened in many ways. One of the ways happened because the man who is our very special guest on our program, he is the head of a place called The Smith Center, Great friend of mine, I'm honored to have him here, Myron Martin. Welcome to our program. Thank you, Steve. I, want to, I, I don't want to start with the Smith Center. I want to start with, with yeah. a, in a different way, and that's with you. You're a New York City kid, right? For a time? For, for a, a time. time. I moved here time. from New you York. moved to New York City. Born and raised in Texas. Texas, right. But yes, moved here from New York. But New York was like the place that you became famous somewhat. You were uh, a representative for Baldwin Pianos, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And you dealt with the artists, and you dealt with the key parts of Baldwin Pianos. You had an opportunity to have as one of your artists in your whole realm of things was Liberace. How did that happen? And, and, and how did you become from this piano van mm -hmm. for Baldwin to Las Vegas, and Liberace had a play in that in his own special way. Boy, boy did he. I'm, I, I live in Las Vegas today because of Liberace. Uh, when, when he passed away, I was serving on the board of the Liberace Foundation with Dora Liberace, his sister-in-law, and with Jamie James, his publicist, and Joel Strode, his lawyer, and, and, and the list of people who were really close to Liberace. 
And uh, th there came a time w when Dora passed away. She was running the museum and the foundation and the board had to make a decision to replace her, uh, to find the person that would come in and, and take her place. And at one point someone said, you know, we need to get someone like Myron. And within five minutes uh, that turned into, we need to get Myron. And I said, there's no way I'm moving from New York. You know, I have an aisle seat at Carnegie Hall. I have an aisle seat at Lincoln Center. I travel the world with the greatest artist. I love what I do. I'm not moving. And 30 days later, I was living in <laughs> Las Vegas, uh, looking after the Liberace estate and the museum and the foundation. So I, I live here because of Liberace. But Liberace, as a client and as a, one of your representatives, we always hear about the great things who Lee was and the great things as a talent. What was your experience with that? Oh, so, so that, that kind of over-the-top persona that people think of when they think of Liberace was true. And it was true in real life. I mean, he, he was a commanding personality. But out of all of the years and all of the great stars that I had the opportunity to work with, I have to say, I think he was the all-time nicest. Uh, I remember Seymour Heller, who was Liberace's manager forever. 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 And, and Liberace and I uh, were walking to the um, 21 Club in New York for lunch. For lunch. And you know, when you go there, there's, I don't know, three or four, four or five, five steps, steps. Go, that you go down. And we were just about to walk down those steps to have lunch and three ladies come up and they want Liberace's autograph. Now, most people today would say, I'm sorry, I'm late for lunch, and they would just ignore them and go on in, not Liberace. Not only did he sign autographs for those three ladies, which included his signature grand piano, you know, this wasn't a scribble. This, this was, was art. art, exactly. He did it for all three, and then before you know it, a crowd gathered. And Seymour said, uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we're gonna have to get Lee in for lunch because we have to be somewhere. And he said, it's okay. And he signed autographs for all the people that were standing there. Uh, I, I think that says more about him as a human being and as a person than anything else I can describe. He was just that nice. You changed a lot of what this community has become entertainment-wise. I remember when, when uh, I first met with uh, you and Don Snyder mm -hmm. and talked about and heard you talk about and Don talk about this vision of culture. Now, now I want to go back a little bit. When I first came to Las Vegas, as I said earlier in the program to the audience, culture was going to the Lido show or culture was going to um, um, Foley's Berger. That if, you, if you went to see culture, you went to maybe um, uh, a small show at UNLV, but there was really not a lot of culture. I remember when, uh, when I was asked to help bring about a Philharmonic Orchestra to Las Vegas by a gentleman who, uh, who owned and ran the uh, Lady Luck Casino in downtown Las Vegas. And I remember saying to him, could we ever really bring culture to Las Vegas? A lot of people said, no, you're just kidding yourself. Now, not only do we have culture, we have some of the best anywhere, not only in this country, but around the world. Mm -hmm. And I've got to ask you, was there a time when Myron Martin doubted that this could ever take place? There were many times when, when Don and I uh, were told, uh, and, I'll, and I'll use these exact words, there's no way in heck uh, that this is gonna happen as much as it's a great idea and as much as our community needs it and as much as we're growing and as much as we're the largest city in North America without, without such it. a place, right? We heard it over and over again. You know, good luck, it's a great idea, but it, probably isn't gonna happen. So yeah, we, we heard those stories, but we knew, yeah, we're the largest community without it. Uh, we were growing, we were the fastest growing city in America, year after year after year. 
People were moving here from places where they were accustomed to seeing a symphony orchestra or a ballet company or a Broadway show without having to get on an airplane to go and see it. So, so we knew that as the community grew, we were gonna need this. Uh, and, and Don, being the great businessman that he is, wouldn't lose sight of the end game and certainly helped me to see that as well. So yeah, there were times when we might have been distracted a little bit, but never disappointed and never believed that it wouldn't happen. Listen, I've been lucky enough in my career that, that, that I was on the Philharmonic board and I was on the ballet. Uh, I was involved in, in the opera company. Um, when I was back in Philadelphia as a young man, I was part of the Philadelphia Opera Company. And I knew how important culture was to the development of a community. Mm -hmm. But even, even being a part of that, to be honest with you, um, my, my sons were young. Uh, the wish was that we had culture, but there was no way that I ever saw that happening to the extent that it was today. So the question is, did it happen because of people like you and people like Don, or did it happen because culture had changed within our community? That, that, that it, it changed when, when uh, the Greenspun family built <coughs> Green Valley, when, um, when Howard Hughes a, 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 a built Summerlin. Did it change because of that and the people that mandated it, or was it because of having something like this? Well, so, so we were never gonna become a world-class city without it. And, and, and I think everyone agreed with that premise. It was an important cornerstone for making this a world-class city. I'll also say this, um, things happen for a reason. Uh, <laughs> they do. Right? They do. <laughs> <laughs> and the stars aligned. Oh, yes, indeed. I mean, th think about it. The Smith Center was under construction during the worst economic downturn in our city's history. Th that, that alone, if you can kind of get your head around that notion alone, it says this community was ready, they were supportive, and, and as opening night proved, uh, they were willing to buy tickets and support it. And, and had it not been for people like the Reynolds Foundation, had it not been for all of those corporations that heretofore had never stepped up. O although I will say the Philharmonic, I remember the Philharmonic playing in the Tropicana Hotel and, and playing in places like that. There, they, it was a time, but had it not been for them, I don't know if it would ever have taken place. We're gonna take a break for a couple of seconds. When we come back, you just celebrated five years. I cannot believe it's five years already. And you've, you're, not only was it a celebration, I think, of this wonderful place, but I think it was a celebration for the community. And I'll explain more about that in just a couple of seconds. We'll be right back. Stay with us. News. In today's world, news has become even more important in our lives. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. For some 40 years, Las Vegas has been my home and it's been good to me. Now, I want to give back. That's why I started The Now Report, the independent voice newspaper, fair, balanced, unbiased, online, and mobile, and it's free. The time has come for an independent voice because news is important. Frankie Shinta, downtown's king of entertainment. You're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Here's a question for you. Does culture make the community or does community make the culture? Interesting question. Once again, a very special guest, president and CEO of the Smith Center in Las Vegas, Myron Martin. Answer it. <laughs> Which answer one? it. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? Uh, it's, it's all Chicken of the above. Chicken before the egg, right? Yeah, it's, it's all <laughs> of the above. You, 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 uh, you know, if you, if you 
if you put on culture in the middle of the forest and the tree falls down, does it make a sound? I, I don't know. No, it plays the violin. Ah, <laughs> might create a violin <laughs> actually right, exactly. at some point. Yeah, H hard to say. I know this in this community. Uh, we have appreciative audiences who come and support great art. And that combination of wonderful people on stage and a great audience in the house creates a, a, a situation that you can't get on television, you can't get on the radio, can't get in film. That live experience is priceless. When the doors open in 2012, mm. March 10, 2012, I was there. Luckily, I was, I'm, I was, I'm thrilled to say that I was there because I think it was a part of history. And there was not only uh, an excitement in the audience, there was an electricity that what the community had demanded for a long time was finally there. Mm -hmm. It came along and it came along and it came along and I remember, I remember probably the mo my most vivid memory of Myron Martin you always have a way to announce the coming season. And I remember you coming out in these bright red, <laughs> um, uh, uh, knee-high, high-heeled boots to announce that Kinky Boots was coming to Las Vegas. Myron, it's the prettiest I've ever seen you be. <laughs> <laughs> well, well ex except these weren't knee-high boots. These were top-of-the-thigh right, high top boots. Top of the thigh. There's That's a difference. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember you walking out, and I said to myself, "There's no way he's going to walk across the floor." <laughs> well, remember, I had to walk up two steps oh, you too. Did. That was impossible. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, promoting kinky boots and and wearing the boots is a way of doing it. Of course, I'm going to wear the boots. There was a time. I, I'm. I'm going to tell you my feeling. There was a time that you had to convince people around the country, around the world, that they should bring their shows to Las Vegas. True. There was a time that when you went to New York to review a show to see if you wanted to, it to be here, that people at the time would have had to be convinced by you that, no, we're not bringing our down show to, to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Why do I have this sense now, Myron? I mean, you announced that probably one of the greatest shows of demand is now coming to Las Vegas, which is Hamilton. Why do I have the feeling that now people come to you rather than you having to convince them to come to Las Vegas? Well, you have the sense because it's true. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Early on, we had to call them. We had to convince them. We had to beg them. And now every Broadway producer, for instance, and, and Broadway booking agent is calling us first. Really? Uh, we're, we're on the A-list of the, the first tier markets that they want to bring their shows. We were the first city outside of, of course, New York, where it was playing, Chicago, San Francisco, LA, where they announced some extended stay. Uh, we were the first city to announce the tour. The first city. Uh, and Hamilton's a big deal, and every city it's a wants it. big deal. It. Yes. Everybody wants it. Yes, yeah. So, so how did we get over that threshold? We opened, uh, we opened successfully. Uh, we did really well with Broadway shows. And then midway through our first season, we did a show called Wicked. And we did Wicked for six weeks without any of us really knowing if there was an audience in Las Vegas big enough to sustain six weeks of sold out Broadway shows. We, we, we had a good feeling, but we didn't know. Well, we sold out six weeks of Wicked, and word got back on the street in New York that Las Vegas not only does things well, but the building's extraordinary, and when they tell you they're going to sell out the tickets, they do. And I, and I know a lot of people around the, around the U.S. and around the world that are watching us right now think of Las Vegas as uh, Celine Dion and think about all the other things that are, that are on, and I, and I believe now people go to your website, find out that the King and I is coming to Las Vegas, coming, uh, that Hamilton will be coming to Las Vegas. And I have to disagree with you a little bit. I, I know Wicked was a big part of it, mm -hmm. but I have to, it, have to tell you, as far as I'm concerned, the real secret to it all was Myron Martin. Mm -hmm. I, Myron, 
I know how many times you went to New York. I know how many times you spent days upon days in New York talking to theater producers, talking to show producers, convincing them that Las Vegas was not the cultural wasteland anymore that had been for so many years, that it was as much a part of you. And I think, if, if you ask me, that's why in your fifth anniversary that the people who helped put that together named the Cabaret Theater, Cabaret Jazz, after you because it happened because of this amazing belief that you had in that. Maybe I think it's a little bit of, of the Liberace that came in you. M maybe that's it because that passion that he brought to his piano, that passion that he brought to his stage is the same passion that I see you bring to what the Smith Center has become. And it has to make you proud when you announce the amazing list of shows that will be here in the coming season. It, 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 may, it makes me proud, it makes our team proud. Uh, it, it, the, the thing you got wrong in all of that is that, yeah, yes, I played a role and I'm, and I'm proud of my role, but we've got a guy named Paul Beard who's our chief operating officer who's been in this business his whole life. And he's, uh, he, he's the last couple of years been thinking about retirement, but he's having so much fun, he didn't want to leave. Uh, he works tirelessly on booking the best shows and working one-on-one -on -one with the agents. Uh, Glenn Medus, who you know from the, the, his great casino entertainment great experience. Great casino entertainment experience. Uh, Suzanne Chabray, for my money, the best marketer in town. And Candy Schneider, our head of, of, of education. education. Uh, um, our whole team, Tim in our development office. Th these are what I have called the dream team in arts management. So, so to the extent that I get credit for things, it's because of this extraordinary team. Uh, and, and yeah, we're, we're very uh, thrilled to see more than 2,000, excuse me, more than 2, two million, million people. 2 million people coming through our doors. 350,000 uh, children. Well, there's nothing that makes me happier than that. Uh, we've had this conversation it's before, <laughs> but I was in the fourth grade. I got bussed to a downtown performing arts center for the very first time. I got goosebumps on my arms from the experience, and I knew that the, that, that experience was going to lead me to something special. I never heard a symphonic orchestra until I was a junior in college taking a class that I heard it and it was it was enthralling to it it, it it encompassed everything that I was and, and I think one of the proudest things that I see that you've done is not only bringing culture to Las Vegas not only giving a home to the to the Philharmonic to the amazing ballet company that we have but doing things like honoring teachers by by doing things like presenting young people in awards and bringing them to a level that they might not have been to before mm -hmm. because of what the Smith Center does. And I don't want to I don't want to go over this idea that 2 million guests have walked through the doors at the Smith Center. 350,000 children have experienced what you bring about. And and what I hope, I'll be honest with you, what I hope is that all of those people that are watching now, even people here in Las Vegas that might not have ever experienced the Smith Center. Um, go to your website, find out what's coming in town, and try it just one time, because I believe that if they bring their families and they, and they see something as amazing as The King and I, or whatever the production is, that they'll be hooked maybe like I was. Mm -hmm. Martin, I wanna, I'm honored that you've been on the program. This door will always be open for you to come through and to talk about whatever is happening at the Smith Center. We'd love to have some of your folks come on as, as well. But I, I wanted to say congratulations because had it not been for your vision, along with Don Snyder, this would never have taken place. So my friend, thank you very much for everything that you do. Steve, th thank you, and thank you for this. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I remember this dining room, and, and I have to tell you, as we've been sitting, I, I have been feeling 
uh, Gladys Lucky's presence, yep. uh, the lady that took such good care of Liberace. Such, such good care. My friend, thank you very of much. Of course. To all of you, um, it's all about uh, experiencing life. That's what we do here. Hopefully that's what you do in your home. We'll be right back with some closing words in just a moment. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions. <coughs> Or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. I've been proud to host the TV show Under the Vegas Sun. We've had mayors and entertainers and some of the true movers and shakers of Las Vegas. Well, we're growing again. We'll now be seen in 209 cities in America through our network, Walk TV, as well as in six foreign countries and in Las Vegas. We'll also be seen four times each week on Cox Communications, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m., and now Sundays at 7 p.m. on channels 1096 and 96. I just wanted to say thank you. Hi, I'm Eamon Springall of Stitched at the Cosmopolitan, and you're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Thank you, Myron, for your candor, for your honesty, and talking so much and sharing with us about culture in Las Vegas and how the Smith Center has really brought it all about. We appreciate it, and we thank the Smith Center for doing so much for this community. Talking about doing things for the community, entertainment does that all the time. And now we've just received word that one of the big entertainment events is coming back to Las Vegas. The iHeart Music Festival will hit Las Vegas on September 22nd and 23rd of this year at the T-Mobile Arena. Some of the biggest names in entertainment will come right here to Las Vegas for that great event. Once again, it's all about the entertainment and being here at the Liberace Mansion, it is about what we bring to help entertainment become so much a part of this community. Until the next time, I'm Steve Shore. Be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. TV.